Hi, this is Dr. Carl Goldcamp. If you're interested in learning about the ketogenic diet like I was to save my own life, then this is probably the podcast for you. Eight years ago, I knew nothing about it. Six years ago, it saved my life. Three years ago, I started researching and talking with some of the authorities in the field and attending medical conferences about this to understand why and how keto so dramatically changed my and my wife's Judy's lives. The purpose of this podcast is to share our journey of discoveries with you in understanding how keto is so effective in improving so many different conditions, from obesity, epilepsy, diabetes, infertility, MS, Alzheimer's, heart disease, to name a few. So take a step away from all the hype you've probably heard and roll up your sleeves with me and join me weekly to explore this living miracle that anyone can access. We'll talk science, we'll talk food. We'll explore its history and evolution to today, which is that the sheer wonder of the ketogenic way of eating has changed untold number of lives, unlike anything before it. And in case I forget to mention it, please join our Facebook group, Keto Naturopath. Hi, this is Dr. Goldcam again, and I want to continue with the idea of GABA versus glutamate and how ketosis, or ketones specifically, will affect that. And the application of this, of course, is about reducing suicide rates, suicide ideation. And I want to convince you that this is true. So I'm not here to perseverate on something that I've already covered, but I want to let you know, and I'm going to go over a few studies, and I'm going to say this is where you can get them, Google this, Google that, because I want you to be convinced that if you yourself are in a place of I don't feel good about myself, I feel worthless, and so on and so forth. Part of that is is a kind of an entrainment of thought that leads you down to a kind of a bad place. And that bad place cerebrally, that is neurotransmitter-wise, is about being pro-glutamate and minus uh, whatever the opposite of pro is and not being supportive of GABA. And so you know, the word for GABA is gamma, G-A-M-M-A, amino, like amino acid, butyric, as in butyrate, as in beta-hydroxybutyrate acid. So it's gamma, amino, butyric acid, that's GABA. So they're very related. So to go from ketones to GABA is pretty quick. And so that's, in essence, what happens, is the point there. So how you get there, you can have a lifestyle that sort of keeps you there. You're you are a pro-GABA lifestyle. Now, specifically, I'm talking about what we eat. Clearly, there's a mindfulness there. So mindfulness also, which is like meditation, it's a kind of meditation, will slide you off to producing more GABA than glutamate. So glutamate is the excitatory. It is the frenetic, excitatory, get up and run and do things and don't think. Right, it's about the bear is chasing you in the woods. It's it's one of the stress hormones that needs to be there. And when the bear is chasing you in the woods, you don't stop and say, "Well, maybe there's a better way for me to think about running away from the bear." You don't have that kind of time. It's impulsive, it's inflexive, it's instinctive. You just run to save your life. So that's pretty much the glutamate side of things. And when you Go on and look at the uh, molecular structure. You realize they're they're all pretty similar. They're just off by one one group being added or subtracted from one to the other. So I want to just throw in a couple studies. So it's not just Doctor Goldcamp going on a tear here, saying he's so pro the keto naturopath guy. Of course he's going to be for this. No, I'm hoping this is a continuation of a conversation that I'm either directly speaking to you and what you can do or I'm speaking through you to people that you can influence that really need your help. This is way more than helping somebody lose weight. This is way more than helping somebody gain some lucidity and and ability to have mental clarity that is perhaps borderline dementia, has borderline dementia, or Alzheimer's. That's another topic. It is related, but that's not where I want to go. I'm kind of about crises management around the idea of suicidal ideation, suicide in general, suicide rates. So it's interesting, you know, the highest rates of suicide in the world are in Japan. I lived in Japan. I had studied at the University of Oslo, University of Bergen, and then I went as an exchange student from the University of Bergen to the University of Tokyo for summer in applied chemistry. 
just a little bit about my background. And so they farmed me out to a lot of different industries. And so I would do a little chemical analysis or whatever they would have me set up for a week at at various places. Like I went to Canon, I went to Mitsubishi, I went to Bridgestone, and it was really interesting. So this is applied chemistry for that summer at the University of Tokyo, otherwise known as Todai in um, Japan. What I learned while I was there and talking to, and, and Todai is kind of the Harvard of Japanese uh, university system, so they will tell you, that on the way to getting into Todai is that academics are so tough and so stringent in Japan that when kids in elementary school go to school, they then after school go to a an academy, if you will, or a catechism for studying and what they just studied that day, but it's much more oriented, kind of like the pre-SAT classes. It's focused on passing the upcoming exams that they have in elementary school to be the top of the class. And so the focus is being so much on the top of the class and, and graduating each year that there is a suicide rate at the sixth grade going into junior high school. The pressure is just too much. So fast forward, there's an article just came out yesterday in the New York Times talked about two references of suicide. One was about women in Japan, and they were saying that their the business and life pressures were so were just too much. The title of this article is As Pandemic Took Hold, Suicides Rose Among Japanese Women. And jobless losses, urban isolation. Household chores, COVID-19 has compounded the pressure on women, rising alarms in a country that has worked to reduce some of the highest suicide rates. And it did have the highest rates in the world. Now it's just kind of tied with a few others, just it is primarily women. There are men too, of course. So I remember when I was there, it was a very tight culture. In other words, you fit in or you didn't. You would see a few crazy people that were just couldn't do it. And they were just ignored by the culture that I saw then. But it was, you know, one that way or the highway, so to say. And the conformity was very high. I'm sure it's changed right now. That whole idea of intense pressure existed then for children, it exists now. Now here reading about the women. So that's just sort of reference of a reality. Yes, brought on by COVID that accentuated certain situations that have pre existed. But so now I'm going to switch over to ketones and brain power. Okay. I think that would be something to look into. So, in studies of depressed patients, indicate that they are accompanied by inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA and by such a reduced amount of GABA and by alterations in blah, 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 the receptors and so on and so forth. So, what I want you to get out of that. And there's a whole study, and I'll link to that. It's in nature, by the way. It simply say they're GABA deprived. They don't have enough GABA. How they get there? It could be diet. It could be environment. It could be a number of reasons. But the fact that you can bring that seesaw of GABA versus glutamate back into balance is a big deal without having to do medications, per my view. It's something that you can start with as a parent for children, as a parent for yourself. So. This particular in nature was called GABA ergic deficient hypothesis of major depression. So it means that they're uh, depressed, and therefore, if you can find help them find a way of getting more GABA, you will lift them out of their depression. Pretty interesting. It obviously goes through a lot of diagrams and an understanding. But and there's another one, GABA. It goes. So there's a number. So you can what you can do is you can go on and you can Google. GABA deficiency in depression, and you'll get a number of articles that come up. Some are pub, from PubMed, NIH. Let's see, GABA amino butyric acid, GABA, involvement in depressive illness, duh. Cortical GABA generic deficiency, a dysfunction in stress, applying the brakes on depression. So, this is all about GABA. So, I'm all about in this particular conversation, ketones being all about GABA. They're like a cousin, right? So, I just told you about. It's gamma amino butyric acid. You got the butyric part that's butyrate. And just like with beta hydroxy butyrate, it's an easy switch to go from ketones or ketone body to GABA. And that will change. So you've come in from the outside 
You also can mentally do this too, as I told you about meditation and thoughtfulness. But this is more academic support for this whim that Dr. Goldcamp is on about saying, hey, this is something worth looking into. This is a real thing. And don't you think you ought to just drop the carbs? I know we're all in COVID. We're all in the pandemic. We're still all shuttered in, and hopefully that will change. But what we are, and we're going to have future situations that are not going to be another pandemic, I don't think, but others in which we are in a situation that we can't change. What would you do then? Well, what I would do then, I would do things that would sort of lift me out of it mentally. And that would be ketogenic diet, dropping the carbs as we've talked. If you want to take exogenous ketones, do that. But I think your day don't last as long. So therefore, I'm advocating for, hey, make your own switch. But if you're in an emergency and you don't have a lot of time, there you go. What an interesting thing to take. Boom. Um, and you can put that in food. You can put that in water. Put that in your coffee. A little bit. Start a little bit. And you'll feel. So there you go. Am I making a drug about, in that sense, it would be like a drug. You're taking something exogenous to help your feeling. What a benign way of helping you go that way. The more you rely on ketones, by the way, and if you have fat loss as an issue, you will be blocking your ability to lose fat. So ordinarily, I'm not about exogenous ketones because it is pretty artificial and it actually blocks. Most people come to ketogenic diet because they want to lose weight. So it is the opposite thing to do. So if you're going to take exogenous ketones, lose weight. And if anybody told you that's true, they're lying to you. There's plenty of information out there now to say that that's the opposite. However, it helps with brain and neurotransmitters and all these other things. So there's two roads. You can get there naturally if you have the time to make that migration, or you can force yourself to get there. It just depends on the situation. But I think it's important for you to know that. So let me see if I can get you another article here. Oh, how to increase your GABA. Pretty straightforward. So some of the benefits of GABA are reduces mental and physical stress, eases feelings of anxiousness, uh, decreases muscle tension, creates calmness of mood, supports balanced blood pressure, and helps induce sleep. So all good things. So when you think about people who are coming to suicide, it's usually through severe depression. And the depression is the gradual decrease in production of GABA in the increase of this strong voice in your head, and that's a, a glutamate voice, if you will, glutamic voice in your head, and you're trying to reduce that. For any of you who have seen the movie, it's been out three years now, it's called, I think it's called The Magic Pill. That part of it, a good part of that movie is about an autistic little girl. Her parents have been advised, you know, you got to do the ketogenic diet, and they go hardcore. They do make their own bone broth from actual bone marrow. And we've done that. It's it's work. I mean, you can do it and that's fine and you can put it away and store it. So they do that and they buy the book. They do the ketogenic diet. And uh, this little girl was, was addicted to those little goldfish, you know, those um, Pepperidge Farm goldfish and other carbs. And for five or six days, it was just insanity. She would scream and she would yell and she would throw things around. And you can tell her parents were like, they probably couldn't take another minute. And then it just broke. And then she decided, probably out of starving, to start having some of the food that was being prepared. And she transformed herself to a, a completely different child. So go look up that movie, that portion of it. It's a great example to watch from a children's perspective. And that was an autistic child's perspective, which are well documented to be high, hyper- glutamate, if you will, and hypo GABA. And so there's the great example of what you can get in there and you can change that. And that was just diet alone. Uh, they didn't even think about doing exogenous ketones. It wasn't, they were just going to see what they could do for their daughter, ketogenic diet. She was an epileptic. She was autistic and ruling their life, ruled the whole house. And I think she was like six years old. Dramatic change. So that's an example. So whether it's children you're thinking about, whether it's the child and you that you're thinking about, whether it's your siblings, I have four sisters. Some of them can definitely use some more gab. <laughs> and others, this is very important. So let me see if I can pop you to another study in case you just think it's Dr. Goldcamp going on about himself. Okay, here's another one that again, uh, what was the search term? It was uh, keto and GABA. 
A ketogenic diet improves cognition and has biochemical effects in prefrontal cortex. So the prefrontal cortex is a big deal, is that by having more GABA, you do get that reflective capacity and you think about your actions. I told you about the timeout box, right? That's what that is. That's a GABA moment. Go get some GABA and think about what you just did and we'll call it timeout. If you really wanted to change that, help them, give them a little, give them a little ketones, go have them sit over there and think about what they're doing. Who knows? Maybe it'll be a a faster transition, but you get the point there and it's really important. So this is a little more upbeat about something very serious, suicidal ideation of all of us, but primarily I'm thinking about younger people. They've had a real tough year and everything you, every time you look into the news, it's conspiracy about something or other. And it's just hard to get a nice, clean day-to-day existence without contaminating it with the news, unfortunately. So this is a way of why we're all hunkered down before we can go back out in the world, we can take the edge off by doing this. And this is supportive for anti-addiction, the connection of the prefrontal cortex specifically. It's it that's what the addiction therapy groups are. You go to a group, you listen to everybody's story because you become more thoughtful. You can become more GABA prone to receive that information and then think about changes in your own life. That's a big deal. Mitochondria and mood. Mitochondria dysfunction as a key player in the manifestation of depression. Obviously, the connection between depression and suicide, suicidal ideation is quite large, as well as other mental disorders. So this is such a strong bridge to walk on, and it's so easy to access it, meaning by dropping the carbs, and building on a basic nutritional ketosis plan. It doesn't have to be medical, classic medical ketogenic diet. That's for severe epilepsy. Dropping the carbs, you're going to find that shift in yourself. You're going to find, if you are the person we're talking about through this conversation, that you're going to find when you think back after you've done this for a while, six months or a year, you're going to wonder, gosh, I wonder why I was thinking that way. Other than it it was COVID and we can justify a lot of bad thoughts during COVID. But you're going to say you don't recognize the issues as being that important to you anymore, even though this is a rather unique time in everybody's life. So this is a short broadcast, a short podcast today to get this point across. I do want to migrate into the next topic, which is about going into certain genome mutations that you can find out about that directly have to do with mental disorders. And you could say with severe depression, therefore make that same pathway to suicide. I think that's important to know. This should be part of your working vocabulary. This is not esoteric and do not give up your power to own this knowledge and to have this knowledge as part of a working vocabulary when you're talking to your doctor. We're trying to bring up that vocabulary so it's not like, yes, doctor, no doctor. That's an idiot going in for a medical appointment. And I don't want you to be an idiot. I want you to be, I want you to bring up, you be the one to bring up the quality of the conversation that you're having with your physician, should you be seeing a physician. Or if you're not seeing a physician, then the quality of your knowledge that you know why you're doing certain things. Okay? So till next time, this is Dr. Goldcamp. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Dr. Goldcamp. I just wanted to encourage you to send in your questions to Dr. Goldcamp at ketonaturopath.com. Many of you have, and so what I've done with these questions that I've gotten back to most of the people I email, but some of the questions that were so good, and if they were overlapping to other questions, I would combine them and try to put that into the topic of a podcast, either via one of the micro topics that are covered in an interview. As you know, we cover a lot of topics in any given interview or some of my own sort of reporting, if you will, on some of these issues. So please keep the questions coming. Feel free to send in an email and uh, I will get back to you. Stay listening, send in your questions, and I will definitely get back to you.